Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Thanks for listening. Let's get started. Wanted to start off today with something a little bit interesting. This comes to us from Reddit. This is a reminder. The entire Super Mario Brothers video game was originally 31 kilobytes. The image you're looking at is about 410 kilobytes. So it lets you know how, how much work really went into that Mario Brothers game, how much they reused, uh, how many... Uh, the switch in, from MIDI to... to uh, uncompressed WAV files. I mean, I have video games today that I play that are uh, 20 gigs, which is just unimaginable. So, got to give it to Mario and Nintendo a long time ago, making those games work at 31 kilobytes. And, of course, let's not forget Atari, who had even smaller games back in the day. Let's move on. I wanted to talk a little bit about passwords today. Passwords uh, and password lists being the thing that everyone talks about at the beginning of the year. Uh, I have a couple of lists. These are, uh, this one's from ZDNet, um, getting to the top passwords. Looks like 123456 is still up there being used. Um, Gizmodo has another list. And, of course, 123456, a uh, very good website that I, that I was looking at today, passwordrandom.com, uh, not only has the uh, passwords but the MD5, MD5 hashes, as well as the length of the password, the number of lowercase, uppercase, and numbers. And then uh, they have a website that you can go check the uh, difficulty of your password at. Uh, excellent resources for passwords. Of course, guys, if you have any type of security in mind, uh, you're, you're not going to be want to using any of these passwords that are listed on these websites. All of these are very well known. And when people are, when, when hackers are trying to brute force breaking into uh, into whatever credentials they can steal, whether it's an eBay account, a PayPal account, or a Google email address. Uh, these are the first ones that they use and look through. That way they don't have to go through the trouble of brute, brute force hacking the, the, the long and difficult way. So again, if your password is on any one of these, it's definitely time to change it. Uh, all these will uh, links will be in the um, show notes. Please take a look at them. They're a very good re resource. Uh, let's move on. Part of security is knowing what's out there and what can be done to you. Uh, you give a little imagination and some creativity to to someone who wants to break into something, and of course they find a way. So reported recently, we now see that uh, our cameras are high resolution enough that giving the peace sign uh, and posting that somewhere is enough that uh, people who really want to take the time to do it can duplicate your fingerprints off of it. Uh, this report comes to us from a... A uh, German report uh, from the National Institute of Informatics uh, and states that uh, our cameras are now higher, high enough resolution that whenever you post a picture of yourself, especially something like the peace sign, uh, people can, can pull your fingerprints off of it, which, of course, if you have uh, your iPhone or Android set up to, uh, uh, with biometrics and gets you in with your thumbprint or your fingerprint, well, they can, they can take that off of a photo now. Uh, an older article references uh, as well. This was um, from 2014, and the Computer Chaos Club uh, in Germany as as well. They were discussing how, uh, again, it could even have been done back then. These guys, of course, uh, get into uh, how it was done and have a whole hour presentation if you're interested into uh, in in it. Uh, and of course, these will be in the show notes. Unfortunately, it seems that there's not a day that goes by that we don't hear of some. Uh, internet camera or internet of things device that is getting uh, broken or we found out is way more unsecure than we originally thought looks like Samsung today is the uh, bearer of, of those bad of more bad news uh, some hacking group who specialize in Samsung devices through uh, command injection uh, through a, a web-based script that the camera uses uh, found that, of course, they can break through the security of the camera. So, again, if you are using uh, the Samsung web cameras or any other web camera out there, I'd, I'd be very careful and um, make sure that they are secure like you, you think they are. At this point, I wanted to talk a little bit about an app that I saw an ad for. Uh, this is from Business Insider, and I'll consider it an ad. Uh, it's an app called Marco Polo. I'm, I'm not too big into... Uh, video production, 
Uh, but I know a lot of people out there uh, are using things like Snapchat, and uh, this one I believe is the the fourth uh, down down the list of, of video apps that are being used. Uh, has quite a number of users, uh, 84,000, uh, 4.5 review. So of course there are people that are out there using it. Uh, this was a, a very brief article that I read about about uh, Marco Polo, the, the app in question here. And of course, was very interested to know the app's security. So went over to their uh, Google Apps page and took a look and was very sad to find that really the only thing it says is uh, trust that your communications are, are private, which um, I think by now we should all know that you shouldn't be trusting anyone with your privacy. Doing doing a quick search on the app, uh, I found a, a website called uh, commonsensemedia.org. Um, when you go ahead and read through their description, they give the app a pretty decent review, um, but everyone in the comments says that instantly uh, the program will hijack your your contacts list and email everyone uh, on that list. Uh, again, reading the app, it says it will do this, and you get to choose who you want to email it to. And um, but but the descriptions are a little a little bit more dire than that, and it says that it'll continue to spam all your contacts continuously. Um, of course, as always, you want to do a little bit of research whenever you're, you're downloading a new app, especially an app that takes control of your uh, voice and text and contacts lists and microphone uh, because it seems like we just give too many apps all of these uh, abilities without even thinking about it. So again, just be careful. Do a little bit of research whenever you're downloading an app, especially if it's one that has that uh, that, that type of security um, that you're going to allow the app to use. And, and again, you just want to be aware. Um, for some people, this might be great. This might be exactly what they're looking for. Um, it's just not for me. I think I had mentioned uh, on my first uh, podcast a uh, another program called uh, Ransom Free, which again I will mention if you do not have installed, it's a free program, Windows based at the moment. Because um, again, ransomware out there is definitely still one of the biggest problems we have. Looks like the Los Angeles Valley. College paid $28,000 in Bitcoins for hackers. And when you read the article, it says that unfortunately it looked like the IT crowd that was working for the college said it'd be just cheaper to go ahead and pay the $28,000 than, um, than backing up their systems, which again, if you don't have ransom free, if you don't have backups, you're kind of out of luck when it comes to, to people taking over your computer. So first and foremost, make sure you have backups of your important data. If you really want to be safe, that's three backups, one offsite, two onsite, usually different media works best for the really important stuff. That way, if your computer should get some type of ransomware like this on it, it won't bother you a bit. You can throw in a backup and move on and not have to worry about paying a ransom. Learn from uh, the Los Angeles Valley College's uh, errors get a backup take a look at ransom free and go ahead and finish up with the New York Post looks like there is a Gmail phishing attack going around and this one is pretty bad now the reason it's pretty bad is because once someone um, once one of these nefarious types gets a hold of your Gmail credentials what it'll do is it will take a legitimate piece of mail that you've sent out recently add an attachment to it and then send it to uh, everyone on your contacts list and of course that would be an email that you had previously sent um, so of course the chances of someone opening it up and thinking it's a legitimate piece of mail go way up so as always if you get a piece of mail from someone that you're not expecting if you're not familiar with if it doesn't look right don't open it never hurts to pick up the phone make a call make sure it's a legitimate piece of mail and of course see the previous section should always have a good backup of your computer, just in case. Thank you all for listening. Have a good day.